if you look at uh, a wafer fab, advanced wafer fab with 50,000 wafer starts per month, you're consuming as much power as a city of 100,000 people. Yeah. So if we're not really growing this industry in a sustainable way, then you know there's going to be limitations to mm -hmm. the amount of energy we can consume mm -hmm. uh, and also the impact that we have on climate change. So I think that's going to be a that has to be a major focus for the industry. Welcome to the Ojo Yoshida Report podcast, the Chip Manufacturing Sustainability Edition. I'm George Leopold, our guest for this deep dive at Gary Dickerson, CEO of Among the Bedrock American Semiconductor Companies, Applied Materials Incorporated. Welcome, Gary Dickerson. George, glad to be uh, here. Applied Materials is uh, among the leaders in the growing industry drive for net zero carbon emissions that company uh, that include company operations and its supply chains most notably in your instance the rapid transition to renewable energy sources for your operations so gary let's start there give us your hard-headed business case to your top 100 suppliers and your biggest customers that the semiconductor industry's net zero goals provide a benefit not a cost well, George, first, let me say that I'm uh, very happy to be here with you today. Applied, our vision is to make possible a better future. And I've never been more excited about the semiconductor industry. Many people are talking about the industry doubling by 2030 and with the right. capital intensity rising, the opportunities for applied materials are to even grow faster uh, as we move forward. Mm -hmm. But the the real challenge for all of us is that the carbon footprint is even growing faster. So, you know, for us, this vision of make possible a better future, I certainly believe technology will transform every industry and will create amazing benefits for the world, but mm -hmm. we need to do that in a sustainable way. Right. So for Applied, we've focused on uh, our scope one and scope two, all of our operations with inside of applied materials, we're 100% renewable energy in the United States right. now, 70% worldwide. We've said on scope one and two, we'll be net zero by 2030. On the customers and on our suppliers, that is really 99 times bigger than our, our own operations. Mm -hmm. and more weighted towards our customers versus our suppliers. Mm -hmm. And what I would say that, you know, if I look at applied materials and our journey towards net zero, there we've been driving renewable energy for our operations, and we've been able to achieve 100% renewable energy in the United States by making investments in renewable energy and taking a number of other actions and actually, that's provided a financial benefit, and obviously, right. it's good for the environment. So right. for Applied, uh, those are the things that we've been driving. And then I would say, relative to working with our customers, we've been also developing net zero products and services that help our customers achieve their objectives. But again, mm -hmm. that's also good for Applied Materials because we have a very large installed base of tools. Right. So we have opportunities to work with our customers to hit their goals, but also generate business results for applied materials. So we're we're already seeing sort of some of the opportunity costs of our failure to to slow much less reverse climate change. What's what's the opportunity cost for the semiconductor industry if it falls short of these net zero goals? Well, if you look at a, a wafer fab, advanced wafer fab with 50,000 wafer starts per month, you're consuming as much power as a city of 100,000 people. Yeah. So if we're not really growing this industry in a sustainable way, then you know there's gonna be limitations to mm -hmm. the amount of energy we can consume mm -hmm. uh, and also 
the impact that we have on climate change. So I think that's going to be a that has to be a major focus for the industry. The other thing I would say, what I'm super excited about for applied, it really goes beyond our scope one, scope two, and scope three, is energy efficient computing. Yeah. So when you think about all the, the explosion of chips in so many applications, you have 7,000 chips in an advanced electric vehicle, uh, chips in every part of our homes for security and entertainment, and, mm -hmm. and you see it for healthcare and retail, tiny eyes, tiny ears, all of that pervasiveness, the growth of semiconductors, very, very, it's very, very important, the energy consumption for all right. of those chips from the edge to the cloud. So mm -hmm. if we're not driving the energy efficient computing, there's not going to be enough energy in the world to support the growth for the semiconductor industry, yeah, going fine. beyond those wafer fabs that consume as, as much power as a city of 100,000 people. But it's also all of the inventions that applied materials is driving in new materials and new structures. You know, if you look at your cell phone chip, George, inside that cell phone chip is 15 billion transistors and 60 miles, 100 kilometers of wiring. Think about that. Mm -hmm. It's just mind boggling when you think about that. Yeah. And you you have 25 materials combined in more than 100 different ways building that chip, and it takes over 1,500 process steps. So energy efficient computing is another big challenge for this industry. So producing the chips in an energy efficient way is important, but once the chips are in all the systems around us, energy efficient computing is another imperative for this industry yeah we we note that uh, a recent report from the industry group semi the the climate consortium initiative uh, estimates and this is on the demand side that 63 percent of carbon emissions are from come from devices from data centers which uh, as you know are energy hogs i mean we've seen numbers that data centers consume like two percent of u.s electricity annually so these are the areas where you really got to focus, right? Not just making low power chips, but you know, cutting those emissions. That's the big challenge. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's that's what I really love about applied materials and I love about the semiconductor industry. If you really look, George, at what we've been able to accomplish over the last several decades, incredible performance, power, cost, exponential improvements in this mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. We do have a major challenge relative to the whole carbon footprint, but I, have, I am so optimistic that we will come up with all of the material innovations and, and the innovations through this entire ecosystem that will enable tremendous benefits for the world, make possible a better future in a sustainable way. Yeah. So how, how are you measuring success within applied materials and, and, and your and net zero efforts? And how have your customers, yeah. how have your customers sustainability requirements for reducing carbon emissions sort of trickled down to the rest of the ecosystem? Are there any good examples you can give us? Oh, absolutely. So as I mentioned for applied for scope one and two, we're well on our way to net zero. Already 100% yeah. renewable in the U.S. You refer to it as grid decarbonization, right? Yes, absolutely. Grid, grid decarbonization. So we're well on our way for our scope one and two goals, George, to hit net zero by 2030. Scope three with our customers and our suppliers is also a major focus for us. Years ago, we put in place teams inside applied materials mm -hmm. to focus on net zero products and services. Today, we have 24 net zero products and services inside applied materials, working with our customers to reduce energy consumption, reduce material consumption, water consumption, all of those different areas of focus. Mm -hmm. And with our customers, we none of us can do this by ourselves. So 99% of our net zero goals are scope three with customers and suppliers. Right. Obviously, we can't do it unless we're working together. Now, yeah. with our customers, about two thirds of them have net zero goals. 
one third of them don't have net zero goals. So the first mm -hmm. thing I would encourage is for every single company to have goals, have real engineering teams working on solutions inside their companies. Mm -hmm. And we're working with our largest customers on adoption of those products and services. We have a new platform, George, that we've just introduced that reduces energy consumption by 35% and reduces mm -hmm. the footprint in a wafer fab by 30%. We have an eco twin, uh, digital twin for our systems. So mm -hmm. you can monitor the energy and material consumption. You can also evaluate different ways to set up and run your equipment based on energy and water and material consumption. Mm -hmm. So those are just two examples, but there are many, many cases where we're driving those improvements in our products and in our services. And George, that can go into our entire installed base of tools. So mm -hmm. for our customers, we're working on how do we help them hit their net zero goals, but those are also good business opportunities for applied materials. As I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, yeah. on our scope one and two, we're actually getting good financial returns on the, the renewable energy investments that we made. Plus mm -hmm. we're hitting our net zero goals for scope one and two. And in our products and services, we've focused a large number of engineers to develop energy efficient, material efficient products and services that are good business opportunities for applied and mm -hmm. good for our customers. Mm -hmm. So there is- And then with our uh, suppliers- There is an ROI here. There is definitely an ROI. I don't think there's a, there doesn't have to be a trade-off. I, I think, you know, at least our right. experience is that whether it's inside applied materials or working with our customers, there's a, we can do the right thing and achieve good business results. And then with our suppliers, George, what we're doing is setting the same expectations that we have for ourselves. So we launched a initiative that we called Success 2030, and we're working with all of our suppliers. We're deeply engaged with our top 100 suppliers mm -hmm. on their net zero goals. And we're sharing all of the best practices that we're driving inside of Applied Materials. Right. And as we're working on engineering our platforms and our products and our services, we're also working with our supply chain on how we can engineer those components with less energy consumption, less materials consumption, and really rethink how we work with the entire supply chain. And of course, we are setting expectations for the suppliers that wanna be part of our ecosystem longer term. They mm -hmm. need to have real goals and plans in place to hit mm -hmm. net zero in alignment with our goals and objectives. Yeah, I know you you've emphasized the, the the your efforts to sort of align what you're doing with with customers at the decision making level. Can can you give us an example of where that's worked so far cuz collaboration's obviously the key here. Well, I I've, I've worked with our largest customers. I've been part of uh programs that they're driving. They've been part of some of the the programs and and some of the keynotes that I've been giving, uh, but but our teams are working in many, many, many different areas within that whole ecosystem. So on our products, uh, products the adoption of the products, uh, we've had success with a number of different companies. On our services, we're even part of their internal monthly messaging around their sustainability initiatives. Mm -hmm. And we've had some really great successes with them reducing energy and reducing uh, materials consumption in their installed base of systems. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you, do you consider yourself an evangelist for this? I mean, you're, you're, you're clearly passionate, but, but you know, you have a responsibility as a CEO to, to make a profit and, and you didn't become CEO by making long odd bets, right? That's how do you square those two? Well, George, I, I think as relative to being an evangelist, our vision for applied materials is to make possible a better future. 
So I am so excited about the transformation that semiconductors and the digital infrastructure are, is enabling in the world. Better healthcare, better education, transformation of how we work, how we learn, everything, retail, entertainment. So I, I'm super excited about all of the benefits that we can bring through the technology innovations that we're driving. But I also believe that we need to do that in a sustainable way. If we're gonna make possible a better future, we need to drive energy efficient computing. We need to be responsible for mm -hmm. our children and future generations in the way we run our operations. And so all of the innovation we apply to the amazing transformation of our lives, mm -hmm. I'm applying that into uh, sustainability. And, and, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, for applied, we are getting a good return on investment on all the renewable energy and clean energy that we're driving to support our operations. Mm -hmm. We're getting a good return on investment in all of the eco products and services that we've developed and we're driving and implementing uh, with our customers. So I, I think this is definitely completely aligned with where we wanna go as a company. And mm -hmm. I also think George, it's the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, you know, the, uh, many commentators have said it looks like from a policy standpoint, we're not going to move the needle in terms of, you know, uh, climate change or climate resilience. And that means, well, so can we get out of this dilemma we're in with with just technology? And, and I think technology may just go only so far. So in the end, this has got to be sort of like an open source type thing, right? The, the companies have to collaborate. They have to share information in order for us to get out of this serious problem that we face. Well, George, as I mentioned earlier, uh, one third of our customers don't have net zero goals. Yeah, so, right. that, that's know, the reality, right? And I, I, a lot of these are aspirational goals at this point, aren't they? Well, you know, we look at entitlements. We look at if there's full adoption of what we're recommending, if our customers are using renewable energy, if they're adopting the eco products and services that we're providing, mm -hmm. what is the opportunity to achieve net zero? And the same thing in our supply chain. Now our supply chain, we have more control over that because if companies aren't aligned with our goals and objectives, we can design them out and go to other suppliers. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, those those are the things that we're driving. But y y as you mentioned, you can't do this by yourself. We can't go and adopt those products and services for our customers. We can't set goals for them. We can't uh, put in place engineering teams that drive the actions that are needed to hit the net zero goals. So mm -hmm. all of us working together, George, that's what we've done in the semiconductor industry. If you look at the way the industry works today, there is no one company or country that has all the technologies. This is a, a magical, amazing industry that it really is like magic. If you think about that 60 miles of wiring in your processor chip in your cell phone, how do you do that? That's, that's just yeah. amazing. So, only, you know, now, only now do people realize 60, 70 years after the industry emerged how important silicon chips are. And, and it is like magic. It really is like magic what we do. But again, mm -hmm. it's really all these companies working together all the way from materials to equipment to design to fabulous to systems. The whole industry working, it's a global industry with incredible innovators that come together to create this magic. This is the same thing, George, we need on sustainability. Every company com committing the resources and, and the innovation firepower and horsepower we have to yeah. the sustainability goals. I am very confident, George, that we're gonna get there, but it's gonna take all of us. Yep, yep. If, if we get everybody skating to where the puck will be, this, this could work. We'll it will work. <laughs> well, Gary, your your passion is obvious. You're you're putting your money where your mouth is, and uh, we with you continued success with this, uh, Gary Dickerson. We appreciate your time today. Thank you. 
Thank you, George. Thank you so much. The Ojo Yoshida Report wishes to thank our sponsors. Members of SEMI are leading the industry group's Semiconductor Climate Consortium in its quest to accelerate the efforts to achieve net zero carbon emissions for the global semiconductor industry. Using baselining and road mapping techniques or reporting guidance and sharing best practices. Learn more and get involved at semi.org. Samsung Semiconductor is among the world's leading chip manufacturers, offering a range of products that power the tools that we use every day. Heavily invested in semiconductor innovation, Samsung designs and manufactures memory, system LSI foundry, and LED solutions.